Bé, era una Barcelona insòlita. It was an extraordinary Barcelona. Everything had changed. You couldn't tell Barcelona was at war, but you could tell there was a revolution And there were far more flags and many people in the streets calling for volunteers, and many lorries leaving for the front, and many songs. There had never been so much singing. people of Barcelona celebrated. Within days of the army rising, revolution had burst out spontaneously in most of Republican Spain. The Republican government was hopeless. Later, government and revolution would come into confrontation, a confrontation that would help to seal the fate of the Republic. Madrid and other Republican cities, columns of workers' militia set out to fight the army rebels. In these first weeks of the Civil War, the militias were the only real defense of the Republic. They were young, enthusiastic, recklessly confident. But the columns had been thrown together in haste. Worse, each column was linked to one of the different parties or trade unions. There was no coordination, no central command. At first, socialist and communist, anarchists and moderate republicans marched together. Later, their deep disagreements about war and revolution were to threaten the fighting power and the very existence of the republic. But now in July 1936, the ecstasy and hope of revolution dominated men and women. Everything had changed, even in the building. The matadors put away their brilliant uniforms and in street clothes raised the clenched fist. Catalonia was the anarchist stronghold. Here the revolution was more profound, more extreme. By the end of July, anarchists who had seized weapons to defeat the rising dominated the city of Barcelona. It was a moment anarchist militants like Josep Costa had been waiting for. Però en aquells moments, quan se produeix el trencament, quan se, la societat rebenta, At that moment, when society burst wide open, there was such tremendous enthusiasm among the working class, and this was channeled through the unions, the parties, everywhere. Els partits polítics, a tots els llocs on la gent concorria, People participated with such enthusiasm, with such vitality, that it's very difficult to describe it now after so many years and to examine that situation coldly. But I do have to say that among ourselves, many of us said, now's the time to destroy all that has been oppressing us. The Catalan government ruled only in name. All structures of power collapsed. Churches and monasteries were burned and looted. Helpless, the Catalan government offered power to the anarchists, but true to their principles, they refused it. The anarchists believed that out of this revolutionary explosion, the people would create their own free society, 
without state, church or capitalism. Federico Mancini was a famous anarchist orator. Had we taken power because we were the majority, it would have meant betraying a pact of common struggle we had, in a way, sealed with the blood of so many of our men from many different sides. Communists, socialists, syndicalists, and above all, anarchists. Communists, socialists, syndicalists, rabasayes, and sobre todo anarchists. It would have meant betraying that pact and doing in Catalonia what Lenin and Trotsky had done in the Soviet Union with the takeover of power by the Bolsheviks. We didn't do it, and we have been criticized many times for it. With hindsight, who knows, perhaps, perhaps we should have done it. Some anarchists now feel that their refusal to take power was the beginning of their undoing. At that time, the anarchists had no doubt about their main objective, to defeat fascism. But for them, the campaign was not just against the army rebels, but against capitalism itself. While the columns surged out to defeat the enemy, committees of workers in the town struggled to construct a new order out of the confusion. At that time, it seemed impossible to solve those initial difficulties. But looking back, people really showed a lot of common sense. Everything was improvised. You could call it a miracle, despite the religious meaning of the word. It was a miracle achieved by the ordinary people. As the chaos subsided, this new revolutionary society began to function. Much of the Catalan economy was now being run by the workers themselves. In Barcelona, trams and cinemas, factories, department stores and even greyhound tracks were run by their own employees. The trade unions sought to food supplies. Union lorries drove out to the villages with goods to exchange for food. Barter, not purchasing, kept Barcelona fed for the first weeks of the Civil War. In some places, money itself, seen by anarchists as inherently evil, was abolished. Shopping was done with vouchers, issued by local committees. What do these vouchers represent? Well, they had to represent hours of production, the hours spent by a carpenter building a piece of furniture, or the hours spent by a peasant harvesting, working on the fields. Everything was calculated in hours of production. The peasants liked it because it meant making them equal to the industrial workers, making all work equal. Vouchers bought bread at the bakers, but they now also bought lunch to the Barcelona Ritz, the big hotels have been turned into hospitals or into canteens serving cheap meals to militiamen and working class families, as this anarchist newsreel proclaimed. In sus grandes cocinas, se prepara la comida para cuantos van al hotel a saciar su apetito. 